It's time now for Reporters Roundtable to put the headlines in perspective. Ross Budd and Bernadine Steptoe, Channel 8's political producer, is back this week as well, too. But, Ross, we'll start with you and House Speaker Dennis Bonin on the defense after a meeting with Michael Quinn Sullivan, the conservative activist who's behind the Texas scorecard. Both of these guys met, but they differ on what that meeting was actually about. It's kind of turned into a kind of a nasty little thing here, huh? Right. Sullivan came out and said that Bonin offered media credentials to Sullivan's group if Sullivan would oppose 10 incumbent Republicans in the House. Bonin says nothing like that happened. He didn't offer the credentials that um, uh, Sullivan's making this up. But gossip goes through the House faster than it goes through a high school cafeteria, and Bonin's got to put this fire out in the House with all the 150 members talking about it. Faster than a high school cafeteria, bud. Who's telling the truth here? Well, you know, it, it's tough to say. I mean, it, I guess Sullivan is trying to act like he's a news organization, so he's putting things in print and, and uh, you know, that he claims are true, you know, that he had some one-on-one -on -one conversation. He doesn't really have any other proof of it. He has a letter saying that they met. Uh, but really, you know, let's think about this. If you were Dennis Bonner, if you were going to pick on five members of the legislature and try to knock them out, you know, would you really give Michael Quinn Sullivan your money? Would you put your money on that horse in the race? He got defeated most of his races. Bernadine, what does the speaker have to do, do you think, at this point? He hasn't said anything, and neither has Dustin Bur uh, Burroughs, who is the uh, GOP caucus chairman. They haven't said anything about this. Well, he's going to have to say something because, as uh, Ross said, Ross said, it's just going through the House. But you know what? Keep in mind, the Speaker has been in that House a long time. And he rolls through the ranks. And to do something this questionable, it just doesn't make sense, but he has to handle it. And also, they're going to have a tough 2020. And to be bickering and fighting like this is, doesn't do, it doesn't do well for the party. But the speaker has to do something, and he has to do something quickly. And, and Ross, you mentioned putting out the, house, the, the fire in the House. I mean, d does the speaker actually come out and say right. something about this, saying, oh, you know, he misunderstood, or, or does he say anything at all? Uh, he did put out a letter that says you misunderstood what I said. Uh, he's got to convince that the House members that uh, Michael Quinn Sullivan is making this up and that Dennis Bonin's right and that he has their backs. And as Bernadine said, they've got to go into the 2020 cycle united or get in trouble in the elections. 60 seconds left here, bud. Let's speak about the same vein. Texas Democrats, considering the rift Republicans are having, Democrats are telling lobbyists that uh, they're going to flip the House blue in 2020, huh? Democrats are saying that, that Texas is more likely to, to vote blue than Ohio, so put your money in Texas. You know, the uh, baby boomers, the Republican older voters have started to kind of dwindle. The, the Democrats are picking up a greater percentage of young voters. They think they have an even a better percentage of winning than they did last cycle. And as far as percentages go, Bernadine, what kind of percentages would you give them of, of winning the House, Texas Democrats? They need nine seats. 50-50, more than that, what? I'm, 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 st I'm stumbling <laughs> because that's a very good question this early in the, in the uh, cycle. Yeah. But uh, I think they do have a chance. Look at 2018. And then you also had a congressman in Houston who is retiring. Yeah. So it's telling you that the Republicans are going to have a very difficult time. They will be working hard indeed. And that's Pete Olson who is retiring from Sugar Land. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. Thank you for watching as well. ABC's This Week begins in just a moment right here on Channel 8. We'll see you again next Sunday. Hope you have a good week.